Chapter 6 Step into the future with the revolutionary helper android, Class C, from Graystar Systems, the quintessential addition to your modern home. Say goodbye to mundane chores and hello to seamless efficiency with our cutting-edge creation straight out of a dream. Imagine, no more tedious cleaning or tiresome tasks. Our helper android is here to lighten your load and bring joy back into your daily routine. With its sleek design and advanced functionality, it's like having a loyal familiar right at your fingertips, with no magic. Features that will leave you in awe. Effortless cleaning. From sweeping floors to polishing surfaces, our helper android does it all with precision and care, leaving your home sparkling clean. Culinary wizardry. Say farewell to kitchen woes. Our android can whip up gourmet meals or assist in meal prep, ensuring every dish is a masterpiece. Healthcare helper. With its advanced sensors and monitoring capabilities, our Android can help track vital signs and potion schedules, ensuring you stay on top of your health effortlessly, all with a congenial bedside manner. Entertainment extraordinaire. Enjoy nights at home like never before with our Android's built-in entertainment features, from customized musical performances to providing endless trivia fun. Experience the marvels of tomorrow today. Don't miss out on the opportunity to revolutionize your home life with our Helper Android Class C. Say hello to a brighter, more efficient future. Place your data stream order now and embark on a journey into the extraordinary. Image of a Class C Android wearing an apron and waving with a speech bubble that says, I'm Helpo and I'm here to help. From an advertisement on the Star Home magazine feed. There were a lot of results to wade through, and it took a long time to load through the poor data stream connection. The first thing that came up was an announcement of Saligrix's appointment as the Master Wizard of the newly colonized Shadow Moon of Shadron. The date of the article put it at, quick math, 80 years ago. Huh, thought Ninian. He must have achieved master level at a young age then. But the photogram attached to the article showed a robust, plump, middle-aged Saligrix, standing next to a silver-haired woman of similar age. She scanned the article. After teaching at Belcarin for over 40 years, the newly appointed master will, along with his wife Eldrathia, oversee an agricultural experiment blending the latest innovations in technology and magic. Wait, that meant Saligrix had started teaching over 120 years ago. Even if he got the job right after graduation, that meant he was at least 140 years old. He looked old, no doubt, but Ninian had never heard of someone living that long. The best life extension magic and technology available could get some people to a little past 100, but after that their soul fire would wane. They certainly weren't still walking around, climbing stairs, and doing magic every day at 140. No wonder his memory was so bad. She kept searching. She found the record of his ascension to mastery, which contained his pre-master name, Gregor Claypinner. That opened up more avenues of searching. As Gregor Claypinner, he had been a professor at Belcarin, teaching portal craft, of course. She found photogram portraits of the young lecturer, much younger, in fact, looking jolly in his professorial wizard's hat. In addition to this, there were long lists of scholarly articles, all on portal craft, and various mentions in the school newspaper, but nothing that indicated why the people of the Shadow Moon would be afraid of him. Ninian tried searching the Belcarin archives for information about the Shadow Moon of Shadron, but besides the article she had already found, the results only pointed to the Brilliant Moon, which was known for its scenic foggy bays, bountiful cream fruit trees, and annual crow horse races along the beach organized by the master wizard Dothreep. To see the photograms, the brilliant moon looked like paradise, and it was right next door. She could even see it in the sky outside her window, beginning to wane with a sliver of darkness. And here was Ninian, in a damp and crumbling tower, working day in and day out, scouring the data stream to find out why people were afraid of her master. She sighed and flopped back onto her bed. What was she missing? 
Dreams of rolling surf and crashing waves turned into actual sounds of shuffling and banging from the floor above in the lower workroom. Ninian rolled over to ignore them, but then heard Saligrix howl in pain. She left Gossima snoring on the bed, tossed on her robe, and crept up the stairs. Saligrix was in his nightcap and pajamas, clumsily rummaging through the ingredient shelves. Knocked-over jars spilled their contents onto the floor, and powder swirled around him. He muttered something under his breath that Ninian didn't understand. Saligrix? she asked gently. The old wizard whirled around with wild eyes. When he saw her, he took a step back and clutched his chest. Silamine? he asked, his eyes filled with, what, terror? Relief? She had seen him dazed before, but this was something else. He looked as if he had seen a ghost, but the ghost had brought him cake, but also the cake was full of snakes. I'm Ninian, your apprentice. Do you need to go lie down? How did you... Where did... His words did not congeal into meaningful sentences. He staggered backwards. Ninian approached the old man with caution. Are you okay? Do you need to go lie down? Tears welled up in Saligrix's eyes. He cried out as if strangled. Ninian put up her hands in a peaceful gesture, but Saligrix recoiled. Get away, trickster apparition! He pressed himself up against the wall. His fingertips sparked and sputtered as a spell formed. Whoa, shouted Ninian. No need for that. I'm trying to help. The blue sparks arranged themselves into the outline of a dragon's head, which shot out across the room. Ninian ducked, but the dragon passed through her painlessly. Snap out of it, Ninian shouted. I'm not trying to hurt you. He put up his hands in defense, still glowing with magical energy. It's me, your apprentice. His face and posture slackened, and the spell scattered. He looked lost and confused. Why don't you go lie down and get some sleep? She wove a calming spell into her voice. He turned toward the stairwell and nodded with a defeated air. Yes, sleep. The bed. Yes. He shuffled up the stairs into the dark. Ninian followed. Near the dining room, he slipped, and she had to catch him from falling. He weighed almost nothing at all. When they reached the dining room, she stopped, not wanting to go farther than he had permitted her to go. Do you think you can make it from here? she asked, but he did not reply. He staggered up the staircase as if sleepwalking. She waited, listening at the stairwell, until she heard the door to his chamber shut and echo down the staircase. First thing the next morning, Ninian sent a message to the academy explaining the situation. Saligrix obviously needed help beyond what she could provide as an apprentice. With no family members nearby, the academy was the next resource to turn to regarding her master's physical and mental health. The lower workshop was in worse shape than usual. Too tired from lack of sleep to use magic, she grabbed a broom. She felt anxious, but also excited about her upcoming call with Drusilla. Gossima helped by using his webbed paws as tiny dustpans. When the time came, she set up her device on the workbench. Soon, her friend's head of wild, frizzy hair appeared in the room. Just seeing Drusilla's broad smile filled Ninian with warmth. Bright sunshine and beautiful green trees streamed in from the background of the projection. She wore a wide hat and a thin, strapped top. Oh my gosh, Nines, how are you? It's so good to see you. Drusilla's enthusiasm was a balm to Ninian's lonely heart. She sighed, smiling, and leaned against her broom. I'm doing okay. I've missed you. I've missed you too. As always, her friend's presence, even across a bad data stream connection, was like being wrapped in a soft blanket. It's been so long. Ninian rolled her eyes for emphasis. I know, things have been crazy over here. Looks like it. Quite a mess you got going on there. Drusilla tilted her head to indicate the workshop. Ninian looked around, realizing that her friend could see the chaotic shelves filled with broken jars. Oh, yeah, we had a bit of an incident last night. Drusilla leaned in. Go on, tell me everything, she said in a mock deep voice filled with intrigue. Nervous laughter spilled out of Ninian. <laughs> Where do I even start? Um, my master, Saligrix, he sometimes has these, I don't know what to call it, he gets confused sometimes. 
Last night, he had a bad one, the worst I've seen. He was stumbling around and knocking things over. I got up to check on him, but I guess I scared him pretty badly. He attacked me with a spell. Fortunately, it was just an illusion, but now there's a huge mess to clean up, so that's my job this morning. Drusilla blinked, mouth open. Holy gas, Nines, are you okay? This concern made Ninian uncomfortable, so she shrugged it off. I sent a message to the academy. We'll see what they say. Does he have anyone taking care of him? A, a family member? A healer? Anything? Of course, Drusilla would wonder about that. She was studying to be a healer herself. Not a creature healer like Ninian, but a medical healer for humans. Ninian shook her head. It's just me. We're pretty far away from town. There's not anyone else nearby. Drusilla bit her lip. I don't know, Neens. That sounds pretty serious. We'll see what the Academy says, I guess. Ninian found her arms crossing in discomfort. It was one thing to be in an unpleasant situation, and another thing to have a friend confirm it by showing concern. Does he have any other symptoms? Her friend's eyes sparkled with curiosity. There was nothing like a diagnostic problem to get Drusilla excited. Um, Ninian thought while she swept broken ceramic into a pile to repair later. Oh, he has this personal vortex. Things get stuck to him, drawn into him. It's a pain in the neck, really. Constant mess. I don't know if that's relevant. A little crease appeared between Drusilla's eyes as she considered. I am not his healer, so I can't say for sure, but that's a common side effect of life-extending magic. When you mess with time, you mess with gravity, you know? Ninian nodded, even though what Drusilla had just said made no sense to her. That sounded like portal craft theory. Oh, that tracks. He's super old, I know that much. There are usually ways to mitigate side effects, but he'd have to go to a healer. You're sure there's no one else around who can take care of him? Ninian leaned on her broom. I wish there was, Drew, because then I'd have somebody to talk to. Huh, he might be a good candidate for... I was just talking to Allura about this, actually. Who's this? A new friend? Oh, my master. She's great. You'd love her. Just a genius, an incredible healer. Oh, you match disciplines. Must be nice. I know, so lucky, right? Drusilla smiled in a way that, suddenly, Ninian didn't like. Anyway, we went on a little shopping trip into town. You have to come visit Diotet. It's so cute. Like that would be an option. I'm stuck out on the edge of the world with no leave. But one shop had those new androids on display, the ones from those ads that have been all over the data stream. I haven't seen the ads, said Ninian. I've been without my device for six weeks. But I think I saw one on the shuttle when I first got to the Shadow Moon. Kind of creepy, right? But Allura thinks they're going to change everything about how healers work. They can't do magic, of course, but they can do all sorts of physical labor. Allura thinks they'll be great assistant caretakers and free healers up to focus on the magical side of care. It might be a good option for your master, assuming he can afford one. Ninian chuckled darkly. I've seen his treasure. He's loaded. It's convincing him that will be the hard part. If an android could help Salagrix with his health issues... It could also help Ninian with her workload. Maybe then she would actually have time and energy to explore the woods like she had wanted to do since she got here. Ninian found herself sweeping the same spot over and over while she pictured a long morning in a hammock with an android doing her chores for her. So sorry, she said as she snapped back to reality. I feel like I've been monopolizing the conversation. How is your apprenticeship going? Oh, it's incredible! Drusilla laughed, and her head shook with delight, sending her curls into a dance. Allura is great. Every night, we have cocktails by the lake, and she tells me stories about her travels around the galaxy. She calls it Cocktail O'Clock. Drusilla giggled. Wow, that sounds fun. Not that I would know what that's like. Drusilla leaned in conspiratorially. Oh, and she calls herself a witch. You know, like the old days. She's been calling me a witch, too, and been dropping hints. She's going to induct me into her coven. Drusilla squealed excitedly, and the sound, normally a delight, felt like scratches on Ninian's eardrums. That is just so incredible. Getting the words out was like chewing the kitchen demon's vegetables. Oh, hold on. Drusilla turned to someone out of view and said something Ninian couldn't hear. So sorry, Neens. There's a firebird on the lake, so Allura wants to have cocktails early and watch it, but I do want to hear more about what's going on with you. It's been so great to catch up. Ninian deflated. Yeah, well, 
have to do this again, so I can feel even worse about my own apprenticeship. Bye, Drusilla waved. The projection snapped off with a bloop. Ninian returned to her cleaning, happy for her friend. Yes, she was definitely happy for her friend in the sunshine with her cocktails and her coven and learning things relevant to her discipline. It was her happy thoughts that were causing the bristles of her broom to bend and break. No doubt about it. Ninian had just finished putting the room back together when Saligric stepped in and sent a glass jar of rat vertebra to the floor. The tiny white bones scattered everywhere as motes of dust swirled around the edge of the old wizard's robes. Saligric scrumbled but was otherwise unperturbed by the mess. He muttered under his breath and rubbed his fingertips together, distracted. Ninian did her best not to let her frustration seep into her voice. How are you feeling after last night? she asked. Saligrix beheld Ninian as if she were a lifelong mute that had spoken for the first time to tell him an unfunny joke. I'm not sure what you mean. You were really confused. You attacked me with a dragon spell? Dragon? <clears throat> no, no. Uh, everything is fine. He tottered over to the chalkboard, and a flask of volcanic essence pulled itself onto the floor. Ninian sighed. Listen, Saligrix. Ninian rubbed her forehead. We have to do something. I can't keep cleaning up these messes. It's too much. Messes? Saligrix's attention was firmly on the chalkboard. Your personal gravity? It collects dust and makes jars fall off the shelves? You must have noticed it. Isn't there something we can do about it? Saligrix chuffed and turned. What are you saying? If you're willing, my healer friend said that there are ways we can mitigate this side effect. The wizard's cheeks reddened, and he sputtered and hissed like an angry cat bat. How dare you suggest such a thing? The impertinence! Why, in my day, we showed our mentors some respect, prying into my personal issues. I never! Ninian held her tongue. This was going about as poorly as possible. I didn't mean to... But if you need help, there are these new androids. But Saligrix wasn't listening. The nub of chalk sprung to life and wrote out three columns of text on the board. Demonstrate your understanding of portal theory by writing essays in response to these three prompts. Saligrix spat the words out. That is your lecture for the day. I expect to see your finished work before dinner. He stormed out of the room. Ninian sighed and collapsed onto the chair. She hadn't meant to upset Saligrix, but he was obviously extremely sensitive about his condition, or whatever was going on with him. Gossima hopped over and licked her hand. Her device dinged. It was a message from the Academy in response to her inquiry. Thank you for writing the Office of Apprenticeship Affairs. We will discuss your situation. Please expect a response in four to six weeks. The Academy obviously wasn't in any hurry. Ninian grabbed a stack of parchment and an inkwand and began the first essay. But as she wrote, her mind was really on one question. How can I convince Saligrix to get an android? This is the end of the free sample of the audiobook version of Oops, I Broke the Wizard's Android by Royce Rosewood. If you are interested in reading the full story, it's available in ebook paperback, and audio directly from the Ragamancer's website or from any trusted retailer. You can check the links in the description. Thanks for listening.